Welcome to the revolution. My name is Rick, and I'm going to take you way back in time, and then I'm going to take you a little ways back in time, then we're going to talk about now, and then we're going to go into the future. I want you to imagine that you lived in the 16th century, and you knew that there were a bunch of guys out there named Sir Elonius Musk, or Sir Jeffrey Bezos, or Sir Paul Allen, or Sir Richard Branson. Uh, well, he actually is a sir but they were all building Mayflowers. And they were gonna be able to take you to a new world. And those Mayflowers were gonna be ready in 25 years. What would you do to be ready to be able to take that voyage? And I want you to think about that while I'm talking because I'm also gonna talk about what my friends and I are doing to sort of make sure that it can happen. And by the way, we don't live in the 16th century, we live in the 21st century. And we're facing a lot of challenges. What's really interesting is the very same technologies that threaten the very existence of this planet are the same ones that can be used to build the new Mayflowers and carry us into the future. And by the way, these guys do exist. And if you watch the news at all, you know that they're going for it. They're building the Mayflowers right now. And they're gonna be ready in 25 years to carry some of you, somebody in this audience, to a new world. And by the way, there are a lot of us also working on prospecting and getting out there and sort of clearing the path so that when you come, you've got what you need. And what's really exciting to me is it's not about one new world this time. It's about an infinite number. The great science fiction writer Robert Heinlein said, if you're 100 miles up, you're halfway to anywhere. But to get there, we have to break out of our cage. We have to stop thinking like we have been thinking. We have to stop thinking about limits. We have to be able to go out and do something important. Now, these guys, these people I know, Buzz and all these people, back in the 60s, they did it. They did something incredible. They went to the moon. In fact, this might be called the most expensive selfie ever shot. Because all they wanted to do was go out there and take this one picture to show that the American system was better than the Soviet system. But they didn't have a plan for what to do afterwards. So at the end of the day, all we've got on the moon, instead of us having this meeting there, which is what should be going on, is that we've got footprints. And if we go to Mars the same way, kind of the way they do in the movie The Martian, we're gonna end up with nothing but flags and footprints there. In the meantime, without a direction, we've been going in circles. I just wanted to slip the word circle in there somewhere. But we have been. We're not going anywhere, we're just going round and round. Except for some of us, we want to go out there. We want to break that cage and we want to go. And that's what it's all about. We have to let a thousand rockets fly. We have to let people get out there, let the imaginations go. Get you out there, because the ultimate goal of opening space is settlement, that's what I believe. We go to live, we go to create a new civilization. Now there are some basic ideas you have to have if you're going to settle. You need transportation, they're working on it. You need to be able to use the resources of space. You need to be able to live off the land. You can't carry everything with you if you're gonna go live somewhere. And you need a government that is at least not in your way. And by the way, what is a settler? On the frontier, you're not a settler. If you're on a shift, you're on a tour of duty. If you're going home to another place when you're done doing what you're doing, where you are. You are a settler if the place where you are is your home. It's a very interesting distinction. For example, Lewis and Clark, who might perhaps were the NASA of their time, they were not settlers. They went out, they looked, they told us what was there, and they came back. These people are settlers. And by the way, the motor at the front of that rocket ship they're riding eats grass. It lives off the land. This is not a settlement. This is a settlement. Now, there is a way to do this the right way. And there is a model in the past. And by the way, I want to be really clear. To be politically correct about this, we are not going to go steal the moon or Mars away from the indigenous tribes of the moon and Mars. 
that I know of. And if so, well, we want to be on their side. We want to have some fun with them. But the old model of going out and building a fort on the frontier and then making sure it was safe, and then what would happen would be trading posts would spring up around it. People would start using the security of the place, the transportation path back to civilization to start trading. And eventually, if you cut to 150 years later, you end up with this little uh, museum in the middle of a big town that used to be the fort. We can use that model in space. We can use the government's purchasing power. We can use the government's influence. We can use their technology. We can use their research and leverage off of what has happened in Apollo and in the shuttle and in the space station. We can stand on the shoulders of giants and get to where we want to go. We need a new partnership. We need them to buy stuff from us, which is what they're doing with the space station. They're buying rides now. Now they're going to pretty soon be buying supplies. We need them to help us build stuff. This is a module. There's two of these in space right now that have been up there for several years as a test by a guy named Bob Bigelow, who owns a hotel chain called Budget Suites. It's happening. And we can build a new space community if we work together. And of course, we need to learn to live off the land. The universe is full of resources, asteroids, comets, all kinds of things, space solar power, it's all out there, everything we need. We can build the gas stations we need. And we can learn to make these big, big facilities. And by the way, when we get into large construction, we can do things like build power plants in space. We could get rid of all the coal, nuclear, and gas power here on the Earth and replace it with clean power generated by the sun. And when we start doing that, then we have an economy. Then it really begins. That's when the fun starts. They used to say, no Buck, no Buck Rogers. Or I say, nobody stays until somebody pays. And I would rather it be customers. I would rather it be my neighbors and I'm buying services from them. In other words, living in a community than living off the government. And we can start to build. Everything I'm going to show you in the next few slides is real, can be real. None of this is science fiction. There's no beam me up Spock, any of that going on. All of this is basic engineering, which if extended and expanded, will allow us to do what we need in space. Cities in space, as large as we want them to be, filled with anything we want. I remember being at a conference many years ago and we were arguing about how we would draw a constitution for city and space. And I said, in my constitution, there will be no loose peas allowed on the plate because I can't stand loose peas. They gross me out. I can't handle peas. If you want to eat peas, go start your own space colony and you guys can all eat peas. If you want loose corn, I can't stand loose corn either. Go start your own space colony. There's room for everybody to do everything they want. There's resources to build anything we want as large as we want. It's all possible. We can go build a village on the moon. We can learn how to live on other worlds. Imagine waking up at night and going outside and seeing light sparkling on the edge of the moon because there are people just like you up there. Imagine how inspiring that would be for you and the world. And by the way, we can make it green. I'm a tree hugger. I love gardening, I love plants, I love life. In fact, that's what it's all about for me. Oh, and then we're off to Mars. 25 years, it's going to happen in 25 years. The first ships will be ready to go. Are you gonna be ready to get on the ships? I should say things like, and you should stay in school and study, and blah, blah, blah. You know all that stuff. So think outside of the box. Break outside of your own cage. Move forward in your life in an intentional way that is going to prepare you to be able to go and face living on another world. By the way, it will be a one-way trip for a lot of people. I said that once to somebody, and they said, oh, my God, a suicide mission. No. Settlers. Colonists. That's what it's all about. Imagine giving your life to a cause that big, being the person who goes and establishes the first city on the moon, the first city on Mars, the first city on space, or helps build the first starship that goes to another solar system. It's happening right now. And by the way, most of the time, people don't really recognize revolutions when they're beginning. 
It's only later that you see the revolution. Most people didn't notice the cell phone coming along, and now we use it. It's a part of our life. It's who you are. It's become an attachment to you. We've crossed over. This is a paradigm shift I'm talking about. Now, there are a lot of people who, speaking of cell phones, like to say, well, I've got a new cell phone. This is a paradigm shift in applications. No, it's a freaking cell phone. This is a paradigm shift. This is at the level of Copernicus. This is us changing the relationship of humanity to the universe itself and becoming a part of that universe. There are people who say we've reached the end, that we have hit the limits to growth. Do you know there are more stars in the universe than there are grains of sand on all the beaches and deserts of the earth? And some people have the nerve to say we've reached the end. It's just beginning. And what's great about it is this time we can go together. All of us. It doesn't matter what your skin color is, what your religious beliefs are, or where you're from. It's going to be based on your merit. It's going to be based on how smart you are. It's going to be based on the work you do. That's going to be the differentiator moving forward. And we're going to go. All of us have the chance to actually move into the future in such a way that we become inhabitants of the universe. Think about that for a minute. You are one of the luckiest generations ever on Earth. I know there are a lot of people who are saying, oh my God, we've screwed up the planet. Please clean it up. Thank you very much. It's your job. Take over. We made a mess. Flip that around a little bit and think, wow, I'm not just going to save the planet Earth. I'm going to expand the life of planet Earth to worlds now dead. What a beautiful opportunity. What a beautiful chance to do something important. And by the way, as I said before, this time we're not taking it from anybody. We're not arriving on the shores of somebody else's land who is much to their chagrin being discovered. We're going out together. We're going out forward to places that are completely dead and devoid of life and carrying ourselves out there. We have to create an economy. We have to live off the land. We have to work in partnership with our governments or in spite of them if they try and stop us. It's time to go. It's time we give it to everybody. The future that we can give everybody can be magnificent. It can be incredible and you can be a part of it. You can make that happen. I'm not trying to get off the earth because I want to leave. I'm trying to expand what we have here because I love this planet. And by the way, this shot came from space. It's a beautiful place to be, the earth. And you know, someday somebody out there, probably one of you or your children, are going to be out there looking back at the earth and saying, you know, someday I'm going to go back there and check that place out. Because you will have done your job. I want to take that tree, I want to plant it on the moon. I want to see a butterfly fly on Mars. It's crazy talk right now. A hundred years from now, it'll be happening if you do your job. Thank you. Thank you.